Hello everybody, Triple here, and welcome to my second season of Dieta. Um, this is season 13 as far as I'm aware, and for some reason, even after all the war crimes I committed last season, they, they're allowing me back for another one. And yeah, this is the draft breakdown, and I think I got a really pretty good team. This is with all the DLC included, so we have some new Pokemon to play with here, and... I think what I ended up with is pretty interesting. Um, we're running a, a point draft here, uh, where we have to draft 10 Pokemon um, with some requirements onto them. We have to have one diamond tier, two gold tiers, two silver tiers, two bronze tiers, and then um, three free picks from whatever we have left on points. 10 points max and we're actually this season doing low tier terra which i've been watching a bunch of draft content and i've been wanting to play low tier terra because it lets um lower tiered pokemon worse pokemon catch up to the better pokemon um what low tier terra is is you have a max of three uh terra pokemon um that all have to be like in this the case of this draft 16 points or below um, and it we only get 30 points, so we have to choose our draft Pokemon wisely, our, our tower Pokemon. Um, and they get one um, overlapping typing as a Terra, and then two non-staff typings. So you can do some really cool things with that. And I had a plan for this draft. I went in, I well I say plan, it's more of a plan than I normally had. I had three Pokemon I really wanted. Um, I wanted Arboliva, I wanted Overquill, and I wanted Gouging Fire. Gouging Fire just got released, and I had seven picks, so I knew I wasn't getting one of the top four. And since I started lo looking lower, I really wanted Gouging Fire. And with that in mind, the draft started, and here is Roaring Moon. You should have seen my face when right before my pick like two th turns in before my pick somebody took couching fire um that was my entire plan out of the window i really didn't know how to proceed from there and i ended up grabbing roaring moon um it's a strong dragon type early on it's really fast 121 speed is uh, 119 speed is really nice and it has a really good move pool honestly it is still a Paradox Pokemon, and it is one of the Paradox Pokemon that uh, have more HP than normal. But for 34 points, I think Roaring Moon isn't really a, a, a bad pickup. It has, of course, like, re it's pretty fast. It has really high attack. It has Protosynthesis, which is very good on it. But then, very importantly, this Mon, because it's based on Salamence, has a lot of moves. Um, Earthquake Acrobat Acrobatics is, of course, the main set it runs. Um, it gets Knockoff. It gets uh, Dragon-type coverage. It gets Shadow Claw, U-Turn, uh, Stone Edge. It has a bunch. Iron Head is a really good one. It has Fire Fang, which is kind of interesting. And the thing with this, right, it's it's very straightforward, but it's super solid. Um Photosynthesis helping it buff a stat immediately is very nice. Plus, this one gets Roost, which is something you wouldn't really expect on this. Tailwind is something that VGC I've seen run a bunch, but can also be very useful in singles. Um, but then, if you look at its stats, it has that high attack, it's high speed, but then it also has 105 HP and 101 special defense, making it kind of bulky, honestly. And you could run some like Dragon Dance sets, which is also a move that it gets that's kind of insane. Um, Dragon Dance sets where you abuse its bulk to um, set up. And I, I like the like I said, it's the one thing it does. A uh, skill shot is a very cool addition. Um, something that might come in handy for my draft specifically is something that I think most Paradox Pokemon get in a uh, sunny day which of course activates the photosynthesis um 
but yeah, this is, it's a straightforward mon, but it's really powerful, and last season it performed really well. Um, and I, I think it's like a very interesting draft mon that you really have to prep for. Like, a lot of my team forces prep, and that's really the strength of this this mon. Um, it's so, so powerful that you have to just watch out for it. No Terra allowed, of course, because low Terra Terra. But it's still going to be very strong. And Acrobatics, even though it's not going to be Stab, still hurts a lot because we use our booster energy. So, very, very good first pick. It's not the Gouging Fire I wanted. And I had to change a lot of my plan for this, actually. Um, which brings me to my next pick. I was not expecting to pick this. Um, but Heatran. Heatran is one of those Pokemon, like, of course it's very good because of its typing and fly fire. It's ground weak, yes, but it's an incredible fairy switch in. And if um, Boring Moon is one thing, it's very weak to um, fairy. Uh, Magma Storm, of course, incredible signature move, um, dealing damage, and it's really strong. But then you get into the more, like, support side of things, and this one gets, of course, Stealth Rocks. But it also gets Wisp. Um, Wisp is something that can really be nice into a lot of things. Solar Beam is something, if I run Sun, um, I can use Solar Beam. Um, my fire damage gets buffed by Sun as well. Then also it has that Flame Body. It has Flash Fire of course, but it has Flame Body as its hidden ability. Which kind of just makes this a risk. Um, I said this earlier, uh, but my team is like really weak to U-turn, but at the same time, not at all weak to U-turn because it really punishes you heavily for U-turning. One of the ways of doing so is Flame Body, and beyond that, like this just gets like good coverage. One of the weirder ones that I was actually looking at was Lunge, um, which of course lowers attack. Um, we also have Burning Jealousy, which if they try to set up on me, I can burn them, which is very nice. Uh, a new move this got access to, which I don't know if it's very good, it does have a decent base 90 attack, is Hard Press, which is stronger the more HP you have left. And on a bulky Pokemon like that, this it's not actually too bad. Um, bounce to lower speed, same with Rock Tomb. These two side by side are really good. Another sunny day setter, and it's a fire type immunity, of course, because of flash fire. For um, I'm gonna spoil this now. I got Arbaliva, uh, so having the fire type immunity for that is really nice. Arbaliva also helps this a lot with the grassy terrain, um, having the the weakness to ground. Um, stuff like dark pulse, dragon pulse could potentially be very nice. Random stuff like steel beam is very strong and gets me out of the way of any effects they try to do. Like if somebody is trying to like stone X me or um, ceaseless edge me, I can just kill myself and negate that. Same with rapid spin. And yeah, like Heathrun is one of those Pokemon, it's just super solid overall. It has really nicely rounded stats, like 91 HP and then 106 in both defenses, so you can run it either way. Really high spe special attack. So, it, it, Heatran is just really super solid, and like you can't really go wrong with it. And it punishes a lot of like physical attackers through Flame, Body, and Wisp. Um, insanely hard to switch into. Um, but, this does leave me very weak to fighting types. And I had a way I wanted to kind of combat that. I, this was a one I was debating on, because last season it did really, really well. Of course, this season it can't have Terra, so it doesn't perform, like, it's not as much as an overthreat, but a Nihilape is still incredibly scary. Um, being able to deny uh, hazard removal is something this is very good at, just because Defiant and its ghost typing. Um, but it has access to Rage Fist. Which it's still around, allowed to use, and this is the other way that really punishes U-turn users. Because we resist U-turn, and then we can get a buff on our Rage Fist. 
Um, this does, of course, has the have the bulk up drain punch break fist set, which is very powerful. But this being a Gen 1 Pokemon kind of gives it like the extra privilege because its move pool is absolutely cracked. It gets Acrobatics, Earthquake, but then it gets Fire Punch, Ice Punch, and I think Thunder Punch. Probably, yeah, Thunder Punch. It gets Gunk Shot, which of course on a uh, Mon Week to Fighting, Gunk Shot is absolutely incredible. Facade is something that's really useful on this. Seed Bomb, Rock Slide, Shadow Claw, uh, Stone Edge, Throat Chop. It gets so much um, coverage. Final Gambit is something I, I've seen it in VGC a lot. And I can just use it to immediately remove one of my opponent's Pokemon. So that's honestly very nice. Uh, sunny Day, I'm gonna keep mentioning that almost all of my Pokemon have access to Sunny Day and it's massive for my team. And yeah, this is of, of course like it's a great typing. Ghost fighting is very hard to switch into. Uh, unfortunately, did not get ac access to Poltergeist, but of course Rage Fist, once you get hit once, is 100 base power. So that does hurt a lot. And yeah, Annihilate, after seeing its results last season, like I got swept by this thing. I played very well around it and it, it just didn't care and swept me anyway. Like this one will definitely put in the work I needed to. Um, a bit of a problem because of the, the added fairy weakness. But uh, yeah, between like Hydreigon, I'm calling it Hydreigon because it's the same time. Roaring Moon, um, resisting Ghost and Dark, and Annihilate uh, Heatran, resisting Fairy. It's very hard to actually deal with this. Um, and like I said, Heatran has a lot of things to support Annihilate, uh, meaning we can get those Rage Fist boost boosts. Uh, all around pretty good stats like not insane stats but very like good bulk and uh 115 attack is pretty good defiant like i said very nice uh we have an immunity to intimidate if we need it um in both defiant and inner focus because inner focus also prevents flinching uh final spirit i don't know if it's gonna be too useful i can actually use it against mons like among us to not be put asleep um, which could potentially be useful. Uh, it does kind of nullify the entirety of Among Us, like Sporing. But yeah, um, Annihilate is a pretty good next mon. And at this point, I had part of a Fairy Dragon Steel Core. I had an I wanted Annihilate as soon as I could because I knew it would be sniped. It was an, a, a Diamond Tear uh, mon. I went very heavy with my first few months in the point department and that kind of screwed me over later but um but at least i got some really good pokemon out of it and my next pokemon is not a slouch either it was on the lower end of gold but i picked up primarina i think primarina is one of those months in draft that is just incredible because you have so many options it has uh the combined um Draining Kiss set, which now I believe. Oh no, it doesn't get Scald anymore. I thought it still got Scald, um, but I guess it doesn't get Scald again. Which honestly is fine because it still got a very cool new tool in Psychic Noise. Um, Psychic Noise on this, of course, becomes a water type move. Um, and it, it's, it, it hits decently hard, and preventing healing is very nice. Um, Calm Mind, of course, is a very potent on this, but then it gets moves like Ice Beam and Energy Ball, which help it deal with a lot of things that would normally deal with it. Uh, Psychic is very strong, Shadow Ball, and I think the Weather Ball is something that's very interesting if we have Sunny Day up. Um, plus, I believe this moment gets Snowscape. Yeah, it gets Snowscape, so I could potentially change weather. Moves like Whirlpool or Psychop. Um, can be good to deny opposing strats. I could just say fuck it and go miss the explosion. Which is... Wait, did they buff miss the explosion? 
I, I was it a hundred before? I don't know. Okay, well, like Prima Arena is one of those ones. It's really, really bulky. AD base HP, one sixteen special defense, and it's hard to just remove in one hit, um, especially considering the partners I paired it with. Um, and yeah, I think it's one of those mons that is just in draft so good to use. Haze and Flip Turn are two tools that are incredible for a more supportive one. The same with Encore. Um, it gets Alluring Voice now, which is also a sound-based move. So it does get changed by a Liquid Voice. And yeah, I just think this is hard to prep for. It hits like a uh, semi-truck and it's hard to switch in on consistently. Um, and I can use it to prepare for a lot of things. I just, like, I, I love this one. Pre Arena has always been one of my favorite starters. Just because of its, like, bulk and, like, really strong attack and good typing. However, uh, I am developing a bit of a fairy weakness uh, still. And also, for once in my draft, I didn't get Comfey. Um... And dealing with that loss of priority didn't sit right with me. So, I have Galarian Slowbro. This one was still available at this point. I was looking around because I had to like save upon points at this point. And I actually overstepped my boundaries a little bit. And got a bit of a more expensive um, mon. Which did kind of hit hard in the later. But for Silver Tear... Um, 20 points was one of the higher tiers. It might have even been the highest. But Quick Draw, Quick Claw is the thing I can run here. And this one, like good all around stats, 95 defense, 100 if both attacks. Um, this one with a 50% chance at priority is kind of ridiculous. Um, it, it kind of just solves my matchups against... Uh, a lot of like the gimmick teams like Weather and Tracoom and stuff like that. Um, and it just kind of does that by itself. The Shell Sidearm is a really good move, honestly, because you can use it either way. It has a 20% chance to just poison them, which is very nice on this team. And it's a slow bro. It's a gem one, which means very good move pull. Because it gets access to Flamethrower, it has Grass Knot, it has Hydro Pump. It has Ice Beam, it has a Power Gem, a Psychic and Poison uh, type coverage. It has Nasty Plot, of course. Um, it gets Shadow Ball, which is very nice. Um, and then also on the more supportive side, it has Thunderwave, Toxic and Trek uh, right next to each other. Um, it has Belly Drone and Nasty Plot, so it can set up on both sides. It has Haze to remove stat buffs. Uh, expanding force potentially on terrain if I get a chance to use it. I kind of do want to use it. Um, and then also on the more defensive side, it has iron defense. But it also has that regenerator, which helps it out a ton in like walling stuff. It's a very good defensive typing in Poison Psychic. Weak to ground, which we do actually have Arboliva for. Um, Arboliva can kind of like weaken the weaknesses of my team. Because both Heatran and Slowbro lose their... Like, Heatran gets a only one-time weakness. And uh, Slowbro just loses his weakness. Um, actually, what is this weak to? Dark and Bug. Which, again, Bug, I punish heavily for hitting Heatran and uh, Annihilate. A Dark, I can bring uh, Roaring Moon in on. And yeah, I think this is... Um, like, it was an impulse pick. I'll, I'll say that. It was very impulsive to get this. But I think, all in all, it's a really solid mod to get. Um, the, the ability to have priority on my team uh, helps out a ton because my team isn't very priority heavy. It's decent in speed tears because it has kind of all around uh, the speed scope. It has mods. But... Having access to priority, um, despite it not being Comfey, 
I do have something to uh, prioritize some stuff, which is very nice. Um, even without priority, still a very solid mon. It's really bulky, hard to break. Um, it's not Galarian Slow King, which went a little bit before this, but I, I, I kind of like Slowbro better. Um, it's a it's a cooler mon, in my opinion. I love the idea of having Quick Drop Kegla. Um, at this point, like I said, my, my plan had fallen apart. I had to go on the cheaper scope. Uh, I knew already that I had to get one of the cheap, like the cheap tier gold uh, members. I needed a gold remaining, but I could only get a like really cheap one or it didn't work out. So I went with Sandy Shocks, um, which was kind of a surprising pick. I wanted a ground type, obviously, um, because that Electra community is just something I really need. I can't let them full switch on me because I have Primarina and Heaton, and both don't like full switch. So I went with Sandy Shocks. Um, very interesting mon because it's also a Paradox mon with Protosynthesis. Um, it's decently fast, 101, um, which of course Booster Energy has potential for. And the thing with this, right, is it's kind of lacking in the move pool department. Um, it has ground and electric coverage and then not much else. Uh, however, it does have Try Attack, which makes sense because Magneton uh, and Power Gem and Flash Cannon. So it has a little bit of coverage. It gets, but the thing that attracted me to this is it gets both screens and spikes and Stealth Rocks. Meaning it can actually like be a really good support mon. Random stuff like Gravity could potentially come in handy. Same with Electric Terrain. Uh, Electro Web is nice for speed control. And then the big like thing that convinced me is something you wouldn't actually expect, but Mirror Code. This one is decently bulky. Like most of the Paradox Mons have decent bulk all around. And I think that this is bulky enough to lift something and could potentially get a Mirror Code off on something and just kill a Mon for it basically. Um, like if somebody pops a, like Rotom for instance, pops a Hydro Pump on me, I might be able to lift that and just kill it back. Um, ground Electric is also very hard to switch into. Um, you kind of need an opposing Ground type um, or a Dragon type. And then you risk having the Tri Attack, Paralyzed, Burn or Freeze you. Um, like I said, not as big a deal in the move pool department. I really wish they gave this mon Meteor Beam. Because I feel like that would something that would make this mon kind of cool. Um, but still, it, it has like good options. And I think for a cheaper mon, uh, this covered both my my need for more like momentum in Volt Switch. Uh, an electric type, which I really wanted, and a ground type. In fact, my team covers almost all types. I'm missing, I think, one type in my entire team. Uh, in rock, I believe. I don't have a rock type, but I have literally every other type. I spread out my types really nicely. And speaking of sp spreading my types out really wi uh, wisely, I have one, two, three weaknesses to ground. So at this point, I really wanted Arbaliva. Um, I had kind of a plan for what I wanted to do next. Uh, none of it actually came through, but I picked up Arbaliva now because it finishes my Firewater Grass score. And Grassy Terrain on a team like this is really nice supportively. Sandy Shocks and Slowbro both losing their weakness. Heatran lowering its weakness and giving some passive recovery to Mons like Primarina. And also Mons like Primarina and Annihilate get a buff from the grass because um, Energy Ball and Sea Bomb. So there is a lot of potential. But the big reason I got this is of low tier, because of low tier Terra. Um, low tier Terra, like I said, 16 points and below. Arbalife has 12 points. So, having access to terrestrialization on this one is huge. I ended up going with what, if you follow my channel, what I think is the best. I have Grass-type, I have Ghost-type, and I have Fire-type. 
Um, Ghost type is incredible on this because it removes its bug weakness and its um, its poison weakness. It resists both, and it makes it immune to fighting, which is normally weak to. Um, and the thing with that is you have to play the 50-50s. Like, do you hit it with a dark move expecting the or ghost move expecting the Terra? And what if I then don't Terra? I resist your hit. Um, and I think Ghost on this one just opens up so many paths. In fact, I was tempted last season to t make this my Terramon with Terra Ghost. Um, cool new access to Alluring Voice is something it now has, which is just better than Dazzling Gleam. In fact, yeah, it, it literally booted Dazzling Gleam to the, the usually useless moves tab, <laughs> which is kind of funny. Um, Alluring Voice is a cool new move it has access to. It does still have Giga Drain and Earth Power, which is very hard to answer to. A Grass type with Ground type coverage is really nice. It has both like the bulk and the offensive capabilities to um, be hard to deal with. Something like Memento is like still very good. Um, but what ma makes this one good? Uh, Terra Fire also very nice because it does like lose its ground weakness through Seed Sower um, and it lets it deal with fire types. Um, it's great offensively and also kind of defensively. But what makes this mon so great is the ability of Harvest and Stank Sap. Um, Stank Sap, of course, one of the most broken moves in Pokemon. Um, lowering attack and then healing that amount of HP is really good on Poker Mons because you just get to like nerf their damage, force them to switch while you're still at full health. Um, but then Harvest. It's great on this because it almost permanently allows you to remove a weakness. Um, and that makes it so much more hard to deal with. Um, because, like I said, I did some calcs last season. This one can beat 1v1 beat Chen Pao, 1v1 beat um, mons like Chi Yu. And it's just incredibly hard to deal with. Um, yeah, it, it, Terra Blast, of course, being stab for this, and then changing with your type into more stab is something this one can do really well. 125 special attack also hits hard. I've run this thing both offensively and defensively. Like, choice packs is incredibly hard to switch on to, especially with something like Terra Gust into the mix. Uh, Terra Grass takes advantage of the... Like, it's, it, it's going to be grassy terrain boosted. And um, adaptability boosted, which like that's gonna be one strong grass type move. Um, yeah, I, I sorry, I'm just this is my mon this gen. Arboliva is so incredible, and it's gonna put in even more work than last time because of low tier Terra. Um, allowing it to keep up with some of the like really good ones just through Terra, uh, making it even harder to prep for. I can't wait to see this mon in action. At this point, there was one thing I really wanted. I was looking at Mesh Grain, which did force me to, after that, get one of the lowest tier silvers and a little lowest tier Pokemon in two points for bronze. Um, and I was looking at... Um, I didn't know what to get for my silver, but I knew I wanted Furret. And right before I picked Arboliva, Furret got sniped. And I'm furious about this, because what am I supposed to do without Furret? Like, it, it's literally my mascot. Um, so I, I, I continued on my path to get Arboliva, and I had to make changes. At this point, I was kind of panicking because I had no plan anymore, and I was looking at that silver tier, like, what do I get of the remaining mons? Um, but I, I decided there's one thing that really, really works well with specifically a Nightlip, and that is Sticky Webs. And in eight points, there was Mesh Grain, which not as great of a Pokemon, 
but Intimidate plus Sticky Webs is just kind of all it needs to do. And Sticky Webs, especially on a team with an Eye Lape, is kind of insane. Because you can't Rapid Spin it, you can't um, safely defog it because I have Defiant. And it makes it harder to deal with mons like an Eye Lape and Roaring Moon and um, Sandy Shocks, who are naturally faster. Uh, yeah, webs on a team like this is just something I really, 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 really wanted. Um, and then you mix in that this is actually a mon with kind of a decent move pool, which I didn't really think about at first, but access to Quiver Dance is something that already puts you pretty high on the list. A uh, 100 base special attack isn't bad either. Um, so Quiver Dance is something I could potentially sweep with between Giga Drain and... Uh, Hurricane and Bug Buzz and Ice Beam and Hydro Pump and Shadow Ball for some reason. Um, and then it also gets a lot of like more supportive things. Um, moves like Foul Play, which doesn't look too good until you realize it um, it uses the opponent's stat. So I say a Ghost Type, a physical Ghost Type isn't on me. I can Foul Play that. Um, and just deal with them. Haze is a really good supporting supportive option. It has stab on lunge, but then also it gets stun spore and whirlwind to kind of just negate opposing setup and whatever. And yeah, I think like power split, weird option, but I can just kind of nerf them all into the ground for their physical attack, which. You know, really useful, honestly. Um, and as much as this is like a low tier Pokemon, I just kind of think that it's like decent. Like it can do some really cool things. And besides the, the fact that it has that those sticky webs, uh, which benefit my team a lot and you should be scared of, it can actually do a lot of other things that potentially could help out a lot. Uh, plus, of course, having an Intimidator is really nice. I have a nerf if I need it for the berries. Um, there are some ones that really like berries. But the fact that I have Intimidate is really nice for my team. Especially on the team with, again, Annihilate. Who, the more it gets hit, the stronger it gets. So, Intimidating something makes... Uh, like, say I lead um, Masquerade. And they lead a U-Turner. And I intimidate and then switch to an Eyelip. I take like no damage and get my Rage Fest boosted. And then I can just switch back into Masquerade again for another intimidate. Which, those kind of strategies, like it's a quote unquote bad mon. But honestly, it's not too bad. There is one thing my team is kind of struggling with, uh, which is removal. Uh, in that, I have none. I have Poison Spikes removal because I have Slowbro, but the rest of the hazards are just kind of forced to stay up. So I... That's why I wanted Furt, most of all. I tidy up to get rid of hazards, of course, very nice. Uh, plus we could run the flings out again. But I decided to go with another removal one from the 2 point tier in Delibird. Um, Delibird is... Interesting. It gave me an Ice type, which I desperately wanted. Um, it's not a good Ice type. Like, it has base stat total of 330, but it gets this move called Rapid Spin, which is very, very good on it. Um, plus, I decided to make this my Terramon, um, which is kind of funny. I had, at the end of the day, because 12 points uh, plus 16 points uh, left me with 2 points, so I was always going to Terra whatever stayed left over. So what I went with is actually an Ice, Water, and Electric type. Um, ice, of course, bu buffing its stab, its stab is kind of nice. It gets Hustle. So honestly, an Ice type, like, say like Triple Axel, or, or like uh, Avalanche, um, on a Hustle, Terra, Ice... Delibird can still kind of hurt, honestly. Um, it gets Drill Run, which is very interesting because it, it helps against um, the ground types that are uh, it, the steel types, which are normally a problem for it. 
Um, electric is also very nice as a Terra type because it helps you hit. Um, it helps you resist electric types. Um, and kind of because bolt beam coverage. Bolt beam coverage is insane. Uh, and between stuff like agility, blizzard, terror blast, like you can just make this like very hard hitting. And then also moves like tailwind, uh, rapid spin, spikes, uh, fake out with an endeavor or destiny bond. Uh, it gets aurora veil, which potentially I could get a chance to set up uh, depending on the matchup. Uh, it has no scape itself. It, it like it's interesting, right? Um, moves like counter potentially. I could just delete them on again, but as much as this Pokemon is like two like two points, it has options. It has options, and as a Terra, I think it's really cool. Uh, it gets chilling water, which of course Terra water buffs the stab of that, and I get to lower attack. Um, I get to run Terra Blast if I want for some uh, good old Iron Bundle roleplay. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I think like for two points, I think this is definitely worth. It's definitely one of the better two point uh, mons because there was a lot of trash in there. Uh, and yeah, Delibird, good pickup, honestly. At this point, one Pokemon remaining, 16 points remaining. I had to grab a silver from the 16 point tier, and this is where it becomes tough because my first option was Riparia. Riparia, of course, being a Gen 1 based mon, has a good move pool. Um, being incredibly bulky, being allowed Terra, which would um, make Lightning Rod really useful. I was planning on making it a flying Terra and everything. Um, but it got taken before I got the chance to take it, so that went off the table. I was considering Minior, which kind of a one trick and another flying type. Um, Tarvos Blaze was something I was looking at, it was still available. Uh, however, it's one of the, the there were a lot of 16 point mons that are, were specifically Terra banned, um, and Tarvos was one of those. And then after a lot of looking around, like, I literally, I took like two hours after my turn started um, to get an idea of what I wanted. I went with Umbreon. Umbreon, not something that was high on my radar, but it's very bulky. And it gives me something that I didn't really have before in a Cleric, because all the evolutions get Wish. Um, this, of course, being one of the more um, bulky Pokemon to get Wish. Uh, in between 95 HP, 110 defense, 130 special defense. Very hard to get off the field. Uh, wish passing to mons like Primarina or Slowbro is massive. Um, especially since Primarina resists the bug again. But this is one of my this is my third Terra type. So what I went with is of course one stab, it's dark. So it's Terra Dark, but then it has Terra Poison and Terra Fairy which are both defensively very good typings. I can practically turn this into a, a defensive Sylveon. Um, and while this one doesn't have anything offensively, like 65 attack isn't great, 60 special attack isn't great either, it, these stereotypes make it so hard to break. Uh, poison type, of course, resisting both fighting and fairy, which it's normally weak to. Um, and making toxic 100% accurate, Small little fun detail, um, make it hard to move. Uh, it gets the noise, which very annoying to deal with. Uh, light screen uh, reflect potentially. Wish passing is of course very nice, especially since baton pass is allowed. Um, dry passing is allowed, so we can baton pass our wish into something. Um, and yeah, it gets foul play. It gets fake tears. It can be a really good support. And like I said, it, it's terror types make it very hard to deal with. It does have a weakness to steal because poison and fairy don't help it to steal. Uh, neither does its main dark type. Albeit, like a adaptability foul play using the opponent's stats, you know, kind of can really hit hard if you like if you think about it. But yeah, no, defensively this one is incredible. 
Uh, I'm surprised I managed to pick this up, honestly. Um, I know it's not that like strong of a mod, but my team really needed this support. And yeah, I, I think, honestly, as much as I was looking at Taros, I think this is the better play. Um, share, share, just because of um, the, the Wish Pass. Wish Pass is something that will always be incredibly useful on this. Um, and especially on like bulky Boring Moon or Primarina, on Slowbro, on Arbaliva, on Heatran, on Annihilate. Like all my team really likes having that extra healing. Uh, I have, I already had some healing with Arbaliva with the Seed Sower, but this is really just better healing. The only thing that's kind of sad is uh, this doesn't get a heal bell anymore. But you know, it has options. I am actually looking at one of the options and y'all better be ready <laughs> because that, okay, I'm looking at a really funny strat. Uh, okay, but yeah, uh, this is my team. Um, I like this team, like it's way different than I normally draft. It's a bit more serious, honestly, uh, which they did tell me last season to get uh, that they were hoping I got more serious and less Mimi, and I think I did accomplish that. I am very top heavy on this team, but honestly, it doesn't matter because my top is so good between Roaring Moon and Annihilate and Heatran and like Slowbro and Priorina. I have so many scary offensive options that you have to prep for, and I think I can actually do pretty well this season. Uh, I have been playing a lot more Pokemon as of late too, so hopefully that plays a part in this and we can actually we can actually do some cool things here i'm looking forward to this season the, the last season was of course a blast even though i lost um uh, i love wi-fi draft uh, that was my first wi-fi draft and i loved every second of it even when i lost uh, matches i would love like just playing it out and yeah, it, 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 it means a lot for me that I'm allowed back here, uh, despite last season, uh, yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to these. Um, they're gonna be going up every Saturday. Um, in fact, at this point, I likely either have played my round one match or it's going up, or I'm like battling today or tomorrow, so yeah i'm i'm really hyped for this and it, this is gonna be a great time and i really hope you enjoy as well so with that that's the 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 friesland Furt signing off i really hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the first match